Bastard Munich vs PXG, the game with the most hype is here and it's top tier. The two undefeated beasts of the Neo Egoist League go at each other in an all out war. The battle for all the marbles is upon us. But also this game is the stage for many untold stories and unfinished rivalries. So in today's video we are going to evaluate each team and how would their players fare in individual matchups. Then we will explore how it would go in an all out war and who will be crowned at the end of the arc as the new king of the Neo Egoist League. Before we start however, if you enjoy this type of videos please consider subscribing and joining my community discord server for more amazing blue lock theories and reviews. And now without any further ado, on with the video. Bastard Munich, led by the best striker in the world, is a very scary team in terms of firepower, but also a very rational team where numbers and results stand above everything else. In fact, the only time this golden rule got broken was due to plot convenience I'm just going to level with you. Noah seems to have a soft spot for ECG, however since he keeps on delivering, this rule isn't completely broken. This aside, Bastard's formation takes the form of a war machine, with three insanely powerful strikers acting as relentless scoring missiles, with only the net being their target. Now here's where things get interesting. Even though Bastard has three insane strikers, they only have two opposing axes instead of three. The Kaiser axe with Ness and Grimm, and the Isigi one with Hiyori and Raichi. Well, before he had Corona and Yuki as well, however, we all know they were swapped for Hiyori and Kiyora. Who, by the way, we still don't know which striker, if any, will he align himself with. Speaking of not aligning with either Isigi or Kaiser, we have the wild card of Bastard, Kunigami. As the name suggests, Kunigami is the odd one out striker, where not even his teammate can contain him. And he has the ability to all of a sudden shift to the flow of the game. Now, on paper, this shouldn't work. And the only reason it does, well, it's because of Isigi's adaptability that is off the charts. But also, Kaiser's insane efficient plays are really hard to deal with. Which makes Bastard a very scary team focused on destroying the enemy defense and force goals with infinite attempts. One final point I want to talk about regarding Isigi and Kaiser is that they both have the best calculated off the ball movements for strikers due to their meta vision. This honestly makes them very slippery and for Kaiser that's actually even deadlier due to his Kaiser impact. And this makes stopping Bastard even harder of a challenge. However, as was the case with Shido, having insane off the ball movements requires for the striker to have a midfielder that can share the image of said striker. And well, Bastard has two very oppressive midfielders that act as a double beating heart for the two axes. Well, one is playing as a right back win, but on offense he has the role of center midfield. I'm talking about Hiyori and Ness. Now while Hiyori seems better, especially with his meta vision and him sharing Isigi's image, add to that his passing and dribbling, we cannot take anything from Ness. The guy has a whopping 97 in passing, which is insane, and he has been with Kaiser for a while now and understands him better than anyone. Add to that Grimm, who plays as a left forward and acts as a relay for Kaiser to open his options more. As for Isigi, he has a midfielder who actually shares his vision. This allows him to move freely and to the most optimal position, knowing that Hiyori will meet him there. This is honestly very scary, especially with Isigi's off the ball movements and with Hiyori's dribbling. Add to that the presence of Kaiser and Kunigami have, and you get one of the scariest forward lines ever. Alright, but what about the defensive midfield and the back line? Well first we have Raichi, who is the anchor of Bastard and who probably has the most impressive feat out of the Ubers game, where he actually stood his ground against Snuffy and even limited few of his options. I know at the end it seemed like he did nothing, but as you all know, to me, doing anything no matter how small against the pros is the best feat for any U20 player. As for Raichi, this takes his dueling stats insanely high, which is the most important skill for his position and makes him one hell of an anchor for the team. Next, let's talk about the defensive line for Bastard, starting with the two center backs, Mensa and Brickenstock. Now, the author never really focused on these two specifically, for obvious reasons, and neither had insane moments. However, the brilliance of Blue Lock shines here. If we pay close attention to the three games BM had, we can actually see that they were really awesome at defense. 
Their positioning was great, and while not on the level of MetaVision users like Ico, they were still doing a really good job. In one instance, we can see after realizing that Chigiri's weapon is his speed, Mansa immediately cut off his course. Well, Chigiri has 93 in dribbling, so he still passed him. But I mean, he actually did the best anyone could do at that position, and even players like Isigi and Kunigami didn't fare any better. And this is a reoccurring thing with them, doing the most rational thing. Especially Brinkenstock, where in the Ubers game we clearly see him so many times on Borrow, trying his best to stop him. Obviously he failed because he's against Borrow, but the fact of the matter, his positioning and defending are still great. Not broken by any means like Lorenzo or Aiko, but he can hold his own. Now for the backwinds, we already spoke about Hiyori, so Kiora is the only one left, and unfortunately we have no clue about any of his abilities. But we can derive something from his stat chart, where we can see that he has a very well-rounded stat line. Nothing really stands out, but his stats are all circulating around 80, with his shooting being the best at 88, and his defense being the lowest at 76. Also, I have to mention that he has 82 speed, which is the same as Nagi, but for a wing, I don't know if that's good. But anyways, finally let's talk about Gagamaro, the best goalkeeper in blue lock hands down. In fact, he is the only goalkeeper with actual feats and insane blocks, like against Ryo's Itoshi style shot and Shido's Dragon Drive in the U20 game. And even in the NEL, with worldwide goalkeepers, we have no one that can even stand on Gagamaru's level. Which is interesting, but this concludes our player assessment and it's time we talk about the team's philosophy. And honestly, for a team that is led by Noel Noah, you already know rationality is king. Nothing matters more than the numbers and results. As I stated before, Isigi breaking the numbers rule for Hiyori is fine because their results were favorable. However, Noah is also very ruthless. Everyone is replaceable if they don't prove their worth, and nothing is above results. Not even the ace Kaiser. Honestly, this is the perfect environment for excellence. You can succeed as long as you give it all, and nothing will stand in your way except your own performance and ego. No wonder the team has these impressive results and is dominating this way, but can they beat PXG? Before we carry on with analyzing PXG, however, I am happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Anime Express. If you are looking for the best quality shirts, hoodies, jewelry and LEDs featuring your favorite anime and manga, like Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer, head to AnimeExpress.store and use code ACE10 for a 10% discount on your purchases. The link is in the description. Thank you. And now back to our matchup. PXG is a very efficient team with insane firepower, and much like BM they employ two attack axes, the Shido centered one and the Rin centered axe. Now, both Rin and Shido have insane of the ball movements. In fact, before the introduction of MetaVision, they had the best we have seen in the U20 category. Rin with his calculated movements and Shido with his instincts. This double-headed style of attack is very efficient and hard to deal with for the defense as we explained before. However, the interesting thing about PXG's system is the fact that the two axes are monitored by one midfielder. Enter Charles. I'm not going to beat around the bush, we only saw him twice, but I can already say with confidence that he is the best center midfielder in the U20 category after Sai. He has meta vision, but more impressively, much like Sai, he has the ability to understand his strikers and bring the best of them, which is an ability I explained in great details in Sai's matchups. But in essence, we saw how he was able to lead and be the beating heart of both systems with ease, and also he was able to deliver insane passes to both Shido and Ren, and you already know he is an insane midfielder when Shido reacts this way. But for now, let's move on and explore the other cogs in the two systems, starting with the Rin's Axe, which contains Tokimitsu and Nanase. Now, while Tokimitsu is very interesting, Nanase is an average player, having physicality similar to Isegi, but with no insane adaptability, or even high overall numbers or high spatial awareness. I think he is the weakest link in PXG. However, his determination to be Rin's shadow earned him a place in this axe, and we can see how despite the lackluster stats, he is pretty determined and he is pulling impressive feats, mainly connecting with Rin on the offense and another player in the opposite system, Carasso, on defense. But before we talk about him, we got to finish with Rin's axe and talk about Tokimitsu. Now, we haven't seen him play since the second selection, but we can evaluate from there since he had quite the showing. 
Tokimitsu is a very strong player. In fact, he is the only one in addition to Kunigami who was able to beat Baro physically. Add to that the fact that when pressed, Tokimitsu shows such tenacity that is insane and scary. And with his ball keeping ability, he would be the best center back Japan has, if it wasn't for his glaring weakness. Tokimitsu has one of the weakest egos, and this is keeping him from reaching his full potential. Alright, but what about the other center back of PXG? The player who introduced the assassin's eyes and the ability to either lock down the weakest or the strongest opposing player, depending on the situation of course. Now, after the Ubers game and the way Lorenzo had Kaiser locked, I have high hopes for Carasso here. And obviously it's not going to be close to the Italian Don, this ability gives Carasso one of the best dueling abilities out there. Add to that the fact that he has the best ball keeping and retention in blue lock, and we get one of the most formidable center backs in the NEL. Speaking of being one of the best at certain area, next we have one of the most dominant sprinters in blue lock. Actually no, in fact he's the only player in the U20 category that can give Chigiri a run for his money, no pun intended. I'm talking about Zontetsu. To be honest, he is the player I was hyped for the most going into the NEL, due to him training under the best speedster we saw, Loki. However, I don't know what I was expecting, the writer dropped the ball with this completely. Still, Zontetsu has a great physicality and insane speed, with the best acceleration in the U20 category, which makes him a very tricky player to deal with. In addition, Zantetsu has a great curvy shooting ability, and much like Chigiri and Baru, he has a golden zone that increases his shooting threat exponentially, and honestly, the position of the right wing fits him perfectly. But with that, we move to the back row of PXG, which only consists of 3 players. Two, we have no clue of who they are and what they can do, as well as the goalkeeper in fact and so we have no assessment here. Even by relying on their design, Blue Lock is known for giving very interesting looks to the side characters, and so we can't even tell from that like other anime. But this leaves us with a player that we know just a tiny bit about. I'm talking about Chapa, who was shown in the Ubers game as well. And for some reason, just him showing, people started to have like the craziest and weirdest theories, like him being a trickster and whatnot. And I'm like, what the hell? That's the definition of headcanon. For us, however, the only information we can get from this is that he is a defender that goes on the offense, much like Nico and Lorenzo, and that's it. This by no means leads to anything, especially because at that time there wasn't even a system there. Loki was just trying what he can with the players he had. And well, this concludes our assessment of PXG players, and now let's talk about the team's philosophy. Which I gotta say, after the Ubers game and seeing Snuffy's tactics, Loki copying Noah has to be one of the biggest letdowns so far. Now I understand it because they're both French and obviously Loki grew up looking up to Noah so it is expected, however I gotta give credit when due. Even though he just copied Noah, there is still one aspect I really liked. PXG's formation revolves around holding the ball down the center of the field with their numbers and having the defenders do a lighter job, which is the opposite of Ubers. And this means that players with great positioning like the Metavision users will find it very hard to break through the field, which you gotta respect from Loki and makes PXG one of the toughest teams while still being the scariest in terms of attack. But can they beat Bastard Munich? For how this matchup will go, first let's start with the individual battles, and the matchups I've prepared are as follows. Gagamaru vs Renoir, Brinkenstock vs Gabin, Mensah vs Michelin, Chapa vs Grimm, Kiyora vs Zantetsu, Raichi vs Tokimitsu, Karaso vs Hiyori, Ness vs Nanase, Shiro vs Kunigami, Rin vs Kaiser, and finally Isigi vs Charles. Now I understand that Rin and Isigi have their beef and rivalry, however I feel like Rin and Kaiser being the best going at each other is just better and far more interesting than Charles vs Kaiser. And besides, the game seems to be going that way, with Isigi targeting Charles and Rin targeting Kaiser. But alright, let's dig in. For the goalkeeper matchup, we have no clue about Renoir, but I'm going to say this. Unless the writer is hiding a big surprise, goalkeepers don't usually matter in blue lock, except for Gagamaro, and thus this is an easy win for him. For the defenders matchups, even though we don't know anything about PXGs, we haven't seen any insane feats from Bastards either, and so it could go either way for both matchups. For Chapa vs Grimm, we honestly haven't seen great feats from Grimm, despite the long showing, and due to the hype surrounding Chapa, I was thinking of giving him the win. However, Grimm excels at doing his job, which is opening more options for Kaiser, and thus it is not that easy. For that, and due to the lack of information, I would say that it can go either way. But trust me, this is the final tie, because now we are moving to the interesting stuff. 
starting with Zantetsu vs Kiyora. Now these two are somewhat friends since they faced each other and then teamed up in the second selection and both hold the title of underrated. However, in their matchup, despite the well-rounded stats and hype, I say Kiyora has no chance against the speed demon Zantetsu. Even in his best stat, which is shooting, we all know how insane Zantetsu's shot is, especially with his golden zone. And so here an easy win for our speedy boy. Next, let's talk about Raichi vs Tokimitsu. Now Raichi has the impressive feat of actually lowering Snuffy's options in the Ubers game, but I still don't see him winning here. Both players are brawlers, and even though Raichi's stamina is insane, Tokimitsu has very high endurance. However, he beats him in every other aspect, from his better speed, much better physicality, even the overall dueling ability, where we saw that Tokimitsu isn't so vulnerable to dribbles due to his resilience and Raichi really struggles with them, and so Tokimitsu takes the W here. Next, it's time for our first rivalry, Karasu the Assassin vs Hiyori. And also, this will be the first eye battle, the Assassin's Eyes vs Metavision. Now, from Lorenzo, we have seen that the Assassin's Eyes beat both Metavision and Predator Eyes one on one. However, as any vision, there are levels to them. Much like Nico's vision is much inferior to Aiku's, the Assassin's Eyes we have seen from Karasu are much inferior to Lorenzo's. And in fact, they lost to Isagi's crude Metavision in the third selection. And here there is a big problem for Karasu, as Hiyori has a vision that is on par on Isegi, and it makes things very grim for the crow. And even when it comes to ball keeping, which is his insane stat, Hiyori has insane dribbling, and so from that I say Hiyori clears and he is the winner. Up next it's Ness vs Nanase, and I will make it quick, Ness clears here easily. Better passing, better dribbling, and even better understanding of the striker he plays for, and thus an easy W for Ness. Our next matchup will be the strongest demon in history versus the fallen hero of today. And as we all know, I have already made a full matchup video on this one, since it was one of the best rivalries in Blue Lock. But I will summarize here. I said it is pretty close, however due to the lone wolf mentality of Kunigami, Shido clears this battle. But alright, time for the spicy ones, starting with Isigi vs Charles. Now Charles is just like Sai in that he had very little showing but very impressive nonetheless, with a passing ability rival in even Hiyori, and from the looks of it a meta vision on Isigi's level, and we have seen how dangerous his movements are, and it is even scarier because he does not need to get past the defense like Isigi, he just needs a small window for where he can perform his passes exactly like Hiyori and Sai. Add to that the fact that Loki took interest in him, and we get a really scary opponent. However, as you all know, Noah himself took interest in Isegi. Not just that, but the best player in the world Snuffy really praised him. And even though his vision is on par with Charles, as I always say, he has the best meta vision in the U20 category. Not because of the level of the vision, but rather because of his ultimate weapon, that is his adaptability, which is just insane and off the charts. And here we reach the point of despair for Charles. Even though he seems insane, he just doesn't have the feats yet that would make me, in good conscience, give him the W. And thus, Isigi clears and is the winner. Now, I know it's not a convincing win, but for some of these matchups, this video is obviously a prediction more than it is an actual assessment, as we are yet to fully see what some of the PXG players can do. But I would safely give it to Isigi here. And finally, it's time for Ren vs Kaiser, the Destroyer vs the Emperor. <sighs> Where do I even begin? With the fact that both of them have the two best visions, or with the fact that they are the best players on each team? Well, to be perfectly honest, this is a matchup that I am planning on doing in a full video, soon, once we see Kaiser's new weapon and Rin's Berserker form in the NEL. However, for now, let's evaluate who is better with what we have currently. First, when speaking of their visions, I would say Kaiser wins, due to him consistently showing both Predator Eyes and Metavision, while Rin used both unconsciously and thus he is less potent at that. Granted, he could have unlocked both while playing a PXG, especially with Metavision since Charles has it. Still, this is Kaiser's territory due to him showing insane feats with both of them separately or mixed. Also, even though Rin's off-the-ball movements are insane, Kaiser is still number one at that in the U20 category hands down. On the other hand, when speaking about dribbling, Rin has Kaiser beat here easily, especially with the Berserker states, which we kinda saw when he held Isigi from his collar to counter his drive. Rin also beats Kaiser when it comes to physicality and jumping ability, while Kaiser dominates speed. However, where Kaiser really shines is with his shooting ability, and even though Rin's is very accurate, it is not even close to the Kaiser impact. 
And thus, when talking overall, right now I would say Kaiser wins. But understand that this is an extreme difficulty win. If this was a fight, Kaiser might win, but at the cost of losing a leg and an arm. Yeah, but I know you might be wondering, how is Kaiser better when Rin stopped him? Well, first it was 3 on 1, and second, the name of the game for Kaiser is consistency. And here, I doubt Rin can keep blocking him like that, especially when Kaiser expects it. Stopping him once isn't a game ender, and as it stands right now, I would still put my money on Kaiser, despite how close the matchup is. But this concludes our single matchups, and it's time we talk about the outcome of the All Out War. Well first we can see that BM has a total of plus 2 in terms of winning the individual matchups. However, this really doesn't tell the full story, as we have to take into account that this is a full on game, and also we have to account for rivalries. Players like Rin, Shiro and Kaiser will continue to cause problems due to their effectiveness. However, players like Hiyori and Isigi will shine in terms of adapting to PXG, which is something that would really swing things up in favor of Bastard. Rin will be the only player holding an adaptability high enough to keep matching BM, but as we have always seen, Isigi's adaptability is unrivaled. However, if you think about it, this would probably push Rin's hatred even further, and a new destroyer that is on a level that is even scarier than the U20 game might emerge, and be PXG's ultimate weapon. But this is not all the rivalries, Kunigami and Shido will be waging their war. But importantly for Kunigami he has to continue his story, and it is here or never. And while I think Shido will dominate first, Kuni will have to get back into the game, and we might even see a hero reborn. Hiyori and Kiyora also have a lot to prove. This game seems to be serving a role of the conclusion arc for Bastard more than anything. So, what I say, Rin, Shido and Charles will dominate at first, but Bastard will claw back, pushing themselves to reach their goals. Add to that the fact that BM has an overall edge over PXG when it comes to the individual matchups, and the result is clear. Bastard Munich is winning our matchup. It just makes sense both from a narrative point of view, but also from a rational perspective. I know this might infuriate a lot of people since Bastard would be sweeping the NEL, but I mean the reverse is damaging as well, it would be PXG sweeping the NEL, which I don't know, I wouldn't have loved for this to be the outcome. However, I will give my prediction for the score, and it goes like this. Shiro will be the first one to break the status quo, scoring PXG first goal, pushing Kunigami to awaken or pull something crazy like we saw him do in the Manshine City game. Then Kaiser feeling his position as the leader striker threatened will go on a frenzy and score a second goal for Bastard. This in turn will push Rin into madness as he destroys everyone and score the most convincing and dominant goal in the NEL. There, Isigi is pushed enough, and as I explained in this video, his original ego will burst into full display and he scores the winner for Bastard. This is my prediction, so tell me what do you guys think. But with that, we reach the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and until next time, thank you for watching.